So, let's get this good. Yep. The camera. Mm. There we go. Mm. So good. Uh, yeah, so weird again to talk towards a piece of plastic strapped to a tree here. Um, everyone, a, a good, good day, good time. Um, I believe it's Sunday. <laughs> I, I know it's Sunday. And so want to give a short update on what's happening in the nomad town um, but also just throwing in some Sunday thoughts I think maybe more Sunday thoughts than nomad town update because nomad town it's like a different subject it's these are like yeah there's a lot to say actually so yeah what there is to say um, can can share an experience which was quite interesting um, there was the Kohtus Vara seminar in Koli last weekend and there was a 20 minute time where I was speaking in front of something like 100 something people which was uh, quite overwhelming um, and the theme was reality survival so and I, I would try to replicate the content at least um, so reality survival is is what it's about right so let's start with reality like what reality do we live in um, and to me that's like first of all being alive on this planet that's like my number one reality um, and I think that's pretty much what yeah I hope that this is something that we share the belief that life is happening here um, and also I think life is very good but when I think of our reality, um, it's a reality where we are the first species whose offspring is well advised not to copy the parents' lifestyle, where it's lethal to actually do that. Um, we have a time where human laws decide over life and death in the rest of nature, um, or believe that we can, we can decide. And these are choices that we don't have. Um, it's like in in the end you know nature rules that's that's how it always is so and to me like a reality where i know that my lifestyle is not working a lifestyle which i maybe don't understand which is too complex to understand that i actually need to know what is happening you know in brazil on the other side of the earth uh maybe depends where you are um because that affects your survival here and I feel very sad that a lot of people, a lot of us, um, do not spend time enough outside because that's where reality happens. And I think if we want to meet reality, we should we should be more outside than inside, preferably. At least more outside than online. Um, it's a tricky one because we see that communication around the world is necessary and happening and possible yet meaningful connections in the neighborhood they they are suffering even inside the families so families live far apart and and we need aeroplanes to to keep our family ties together and that's something we cannot really afford and uh, it's a tricky one because of course family is so important so but family used to be the local community and now family is a global community, which is, you know, good, I guess. <coughs> At least we feel connected globally. But the other thing is that locally connections are suffering. So, and I think in the local reality, there's a lot more we can do together. Hmm, what else about reality? Yeah, I find... You know, it's a reality that the risk. Oh, swans flying over somewhere. Nice. There. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, the, I think the, maybe one of the other two main messages today that matter to me is, first of all, that deep nature connection is the medicine that our world needs the most. Like, deep nature connection is the medicine our world needs the most. Thank you, John Young, for these words. Um, I couldn't agree more. Um, and deep nature connection is is highly addictive, has no side effects, um, and reminds us what is possible, what is necessary. Um, and I think reducing life to our needs is is a necessity. So when I think of the Finnish ecological footprint in global hectares, it's like 5.87 hectares, global hectares per person. That's like it's so many planets we need if everybody would live like this. And we feel like we're not, you know, we don't feel much guilty here for how we are living. And the way we are living here really makes others of us species, including people on this planet, suffer like so much that it's unbelievable. And we don't feel it. So with deep nature connection, we feel it because signs of, of, I mean, we can see so much in the, in the forests or previous forests, or previous bogs, um, what, how much life is suffering through human actions. Um, at the same time, it tells me that we have enormous possibilities to affect life in a positive way also. And yeah, that brings me to the second message, uh, which I hold to for myself, is that that we have to choose positive. Like in a survival situation, we have to choose positive um, simply because it's so much more fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, what, what does it help not to be positive? Um, and, and to me, at least, it, it was a choice. Um, and also, like, that, that highly affects on how I feel about taking a step away from, from um, a lifestyle which I considered as normal not too long ago. And that's a lifestyle of what is the European average? 44.2 square meters of living space per person. 44.2 square meters of shelter, heated, requiring energy, construction materials, maintenance. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot. You know, when, when we think of it like shelter, like that's that's where I'm now. Like yeah, my shelter behind me. On the other hand, I know I can be really, really, really happy in winter with just um, you know a small wood stove, a really good sleeping bag, um, or other insulation. Right? It doesn't have to be a sleeping bag, and and calories, right? And calories are like, um, you know, it's so easy to access calories, especially when you think of the and I think of the um, the surplus from the cities. How much is thrown away? How much goes to waste? Yeah. Um, yeah, going to waste. A little update about what's happening here to today. Um, a group of like hunting, like friends who are hunters. Um, they usually don't use the head when they hunt moose, for example. So now they hunted a moose yesterday and they will bring me the head. Um, bring us the head. Yeah, so it will arrive here in the Nomad town at some point today. And um, the idea is to dig a pit and make Roswo Beistin, like a very old way of making food. So pit cooking under the fire for probably 18 hours or so. I have, I don't know, I have no experience. Yeah, so yeah, that happens. Um, but I got distracted. Um, the choice of positive, like choosing positive, I think, um, mm, mm, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, shaga mushroom tea. It's so good. Like choosing positive makes it a lot easier to to understand or to what well, to dare adventure, right? To dare adventure. That's probably the the, the words um, which I got from some wonderful person who is an ancestor now. Um, yeah, life is either daring adventure or nothing at all. That were her words about like that, and I think that's that's the only way out. So trying to make our non-sustainable lifestyle more sustainable is far too long, complex, biased, um, unhappy, expensive. Don't know, whatever. Uh, it, it, it not enough. So. I think that the risk of daring adventure, the risk of taking a step outside of our comfort zone, like a huge step, and I would actually like to call comfort zone suicide bubble, because we know it's a suicide bubble, it's madness what we're doing. So taking the huge step out into the unknown and just trying as good as we can, um, as high on the sustainability scale as possible, as as high on the life quality level, at least that's what I, yeah, just, just yeah, that's how it feels, um, and low on the impact. So, and that risk of taking this step is much, 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 much lower than continuing what we are doing. So, hmm, yeah, nobody knows tomorrow. But there are a lot of people who have many reasons and experience to believe that maybe the tomorrow they are dead. We have the choice here in our world, in our Western world, so-called Western world. I don't know how, like, not even civilized, m- madness world. Yeah, madness world. Um, that we think we have choices. We can plan, you know, holidays and things because it's all legal and advertised and so normal. Um, We don't have those choices. These are choices we don't have. Schopenhauer words, man can do what he wants, but he cannot will what he will. I, I only know it in German. So it's a rough translation, which I don't think fits my understanding of the German version, which is der Mensch kann wohl tun, was er will, aber er kann nicht wollen, was er will. These are words which remind of of the necessity to be aware of our circle of awareness and our circle of disturbance. Be aware of our impacts and the benefits and interactions we have with the rest of the natural world and each other that is nature connection, connection with each other and ourselves. Connection to ourselves, like how far off are we? I I believe that I have maybe the skill set of a six year old stone age child. Um, This is how mature I am. (laughs) Yeah. When I think of like what, what should be possible according to human nature, how to live, hoo-hoo, a long way. But we don't need to go that way. There's no, no need for that. But I think the way that we need to go is we need to go forward and fast, deciding it now. Like really now, there is no later. There is no later. That's like, it's up to a decision. That's the only thing. It's just a decision. And to me... Also, the Extinction Rebellion story is a decision including providing space for alternatives. Um, Providing alternatives. So, and that's like resilience hubs to me. Hmm. I think my... morning talk is over um something that i would like to do um oh yeah next week will be really interesting here also we have some music evening some talk 
um, there's a movie night uh, in town or a movie festival in town Vistrut Ethnographic Documentary Film Festival very promising um, and there might be a wild circle camp here for November if people are interested and yeah I forgot something. Mm. Oh yeah, want to make a, some video series uh, where, yeah, like pretty much like the kind of accompanying the the course that I'm giving in the moment of putting ecological footprint to half of the Finnish average. Um, yeah, this course is very interesting. I'm struggling with Finnish a bit, but nevertheless, I uh, want to make a couple of videos, like probably seven or eight. Um, I'm struggling with the eighth video because that would be about transport, and transport is not, is not a survival priority. Survival priorities are food, shelter, water, air, health, and community. Six of them, food, shelter, air, water, health, and community, which is nature connection and love. So, and then like having a series about each of those. And transport is so dominant in all of them. Also, while well, community is so huge, you know, starts with democracy, local culture, uh, community, culture repair. Yeah. Mm, we should get the Eight Shields Village Builder course happening here. That would be, yeah. Or, or in your place. Yeah, village builders. Okay. Mm. So long. Have a good life. Maybe see you again. Maybe not. And oh, thank you, subscribers and sharers and commenters. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's really a pleasure. Um, and yeah, still strange to talk to a piece of plastic strapped to a tree here. Goodbye. Take care.